steam. We're having a good time. Good time. All right, this week we're in Alabama and we're actually gonna be here for several weeks and we are trapping beaver in large bodies of water. So we're using a, a 330 conibear, that's our, that's our trap of choice. And what we're showing you today is how to build what we call an H-frame support system for your 330 because you're out in deep water, you're putting your hands down in there and, and you're trying to place this trap and center it on the run at the bottom of the run as, as the beaver runs through it, he's gonna punch this trigger, right? The easiest, most effective way is to have a bunch of these H-frames pre-made. So basically it's 5 16 hot rolled steel, very inexpensive stuff. We cut these two pieces at 12 inches. Um, the two vertical frame sides are also 5 16 rod and they're about 41 inches, give or take. And then the two support legs are quarter inch hot rolled steel cut at two inches. So, and then this last item is a number three machine chain just one link. Whenever you're putting these eight stands together, you want to make sure the tops line whenever you link them together with a chain link. The bottom's not going to matter, it's going to go in the mud. We're going to measure from the top down. We're going to come to 21, 26, and 29. The bottom two marks where your 12 inch rods go, the top one is where your support goes for your trap where it stops the trap from going all the way to the bottom. And we just take these right on part and we're going to tack these to the rod. I guess you take your little two inch rod we're going to go to the 21 inch mark and it's going to be five inches above this bottom rod most 330s are 10 inches wide Duke's only nine but it'll just run right above the top of that bar I'm going to take these off You'll see that the uh, spring eyelets will come to rest on those two horizontal legs. Stops the trap right there. And then what this does is allows you to have a safe spot to put your foot between these two horizontal rods. You put your foot down here and press this into the so soft bottom of the beaver's run till, you, till, this, till your foot basically hits the bottom of the run. So now the trap is, is two inches off the ground the beaver's gonna hug the bottom of the of the channel as he's running to his lodge or you know coming and going. But this keeps the trap completely supported, doesn't allow it to twist. The, the beaver will not push it out of the way and allows him to fire the trigger as he goes through it. tail wherever they're going up in their den like I'm standing this deep and then you walk right here it drops off that deep and then it's right back up on this side back shallow again they're going to travel the bottom of that run from out there coming right up here into their den we just take that trap and feel with our feet feel wherever the bottom of us at and put it right down on the bottom all the way against the bottom The beavers are getting out of the water and crossing all the way over probably 200 yards of land through this hardwood little finger that comes out here. It's an island, runs all the way out. To cut their distance, instead of going all the way around, they just get out here and cross over to the next louver body of water. We're just gonna put this 330 in their way. They're not just a 
cute little friendless pet. Or destructive little critter. Causing problems. We're trapping areas to remove beaver uh, out of a population that have areas backed up with water from their dam creation. And as a trapper and a wildlife manager, we look at, this is a tool that we use just as in anything else, it's the best, most effective tool for removing populations. Beaver don't have an, a, a normal, uh, naturally existing enemy. So as man and as we're a steward of the land, we're doing what we have to do to remove water from soils that don't typically have water standing in them for two reasons. Here we are getting ready to have spring green up anytime food plot season is right around the corner. So a lot of these soils are wet and will never dry out because of the the obstruction of the beaver dams have these areas backed up in excessive water. Secondarily, a lot of these tree species don't like to have um, roots in these wet soils. They're not really conducive for growing in that kind of a condition, so we don't want to lose our trees as well. It's the most effective way that we have found to remove enough of the population, not the whole thing, we're not exterminating. And then the next step will be to remove these dams that are holding back this water and allow these areas to dry out just prior to our planting season coming up here soon. We're gonna do that a couple different ways. But the most exciting way that you've probably never seen is with explosives. Casey, I'm gonna make you famous one day. First of all, do not try this at home. Tim Brooks is a licensed professional to handle um, this material. He's the local wildlife biologist of the area and, and his services are called upon from time to time to do exactly this, remove these beaver dams because sometimes they're in locations you can't get machinery to them and this is the only logical way that they can be handled. But this is a very effective way, however extremely dangerous. Fire in the hole! That's, that's cool. That's a lot of power right there. And then instantaneous whoosh. Look how much water has dropped within five minutes of us blowing that. That's at least four feet deep from the bottom of that dish right there to the top of that ice. And then that, that was a two tiered dam. So we had water level probably eight feet difference from the very bottom to up here and it's cleaning it all out now. Amazing. But it also makes you appreciate how hard a beaver works and how ingenious they are to be able to plug up a creek like this and utilize existing trees and roots, but cut all that stuff and all the work that they put into it. They're definitely an engineering marvel. That's amazing. Sometimes you just gotta get on old Chuck. Let him loosen up a little bit. I am what I am. <laughs> if you sit me down, I'm gonna talk like this. <laughs> plantations, nothing can be better. <laughs> That'd have been good if he hadn't have just bulldozed the camera. <laughs> <laughs>